Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Let us start this lecture with a thought process. Success and failure are two perpetual processes that are encountered on the path of human life. Hence, there is no need to be either related or perturbed by its manifestation. So, if you recall that in the last lecture, we discuss about, uh, you know, the partial derivative method and Jacobian methods. And we have uh, recapitulated the uh, rules which govern this partial derivative method. There are basically three rules. One is the reciprocal rule, chain rule, and the uh, what you call cyclic rule. So these three uh, are to be used. And then later on, we also find out the relations, uh, how to connect these Jacobians you know, with the deriva partial derivatives. And we have also enumerated uh, the four rules. <coughs> and later on, we looked at the thermodynamic potential. We discussed about four potentials, basically internal energy, enthalpy, Gibbs function, and Helmer's function, or potential, whatever you call. And uh, we also derived the relationship, uh, you know, connecting those change in the uh, potential, thermodynamic potential in terms of measurable properties and non-measurable properties, right? <clears throat> and those uh, things will be uh, now connecting it, you know, with the measure and non-measurable properties. So uh, in today's lecture, <clears throat> so let us uh, consider a thermodynamic potential that is internal energy, which is more natural because it comes from the first law of thermodynamics, whereas other properties are derived, right? And for which we can write down, that is the first Gibbs equation, uh, that is du is equal to Tds minus Pdv. And u, uh, as we know, is a basically thermodynamic properties, and hence its differential uh, must be exact, and for that, what we'll do, we'll use this, uh, you know, uh, condition that is dou m by dou y when x is equal to constant equal to dou n by dou x when y constant. If the form is basically, you know, m uh, d z is equal to m dx plus n dy, there is a lot of similarities between this and also this one, right? Isn't it? And if you look at, in this case, in this equation 1, the m is basically t. And in equation 2, you can say n is equal to minus p, right? So I can, uh, you know, write this condition, like for to be a property, like uh, internalized property, as basically dou t by dou v, when s remaining constant, is equal to minus dou p by dou s, uh, when uh, B is remaining constant. So, uh, if you look at basically this one, what it indicates? In if you look at left hand side, that is basically change in the temperature with respect to specific volume, whereas right hand side change in pressure with respect to entropy. As we know that entropy is not a measurable property. Right? Whereas, temperature, volume, pressure are measurable property. That means, I can relate the non-measurable properties with the measurable properties with this expression. Right? Okay. And this expression is basically known as the Maxwell relation. It is a very important aspect which is being used, you know, in thermodynamic, particularly for uh, having the thermodynamic relations. 
the objective of thermodynamic relation is to connect the non-measurable properties with the measurable properties. So, in the similar manner, we will be using others Gibbs equations, right? There are total four, you know, Gibbs equation we have seen or we have derived in the last lecture. So, we will be using that. So, let us look at the what are the thermodynamic potential we have, you know, discussed till now. That is one is internal energy, right? And which is a function of S and V, right? Isn't it? If you look at this in, from this equation, you can write down U is a function of S and V. And by using this U as a property of the system, then I can find out where this expression, you know, very easily, right? And that is the differential, and this being derived from the differential relationship, what we call Gibbs equation, that is equation number one. So, you know, we can, this is, this equation is basically Maxwell equation. In similar manner, right, I can write down that change in the Helmer's um, function is equal to minus S d t minus P d v. We have already derived this. And by using the same condition, I can get dou S by dou V when temperature remaining constant is equal to dou P by dou T when volume remaining constant. If you know this expression, right, uh, differential expression, very easily you can get a Maxwell relationship, right. In the similar fa fashion, we can write down that D H is equal to T D S plus V D P, right. And from this expression, I can write down dou T by dou P when entropy remaining constant is equal to uh, dou V by dou S when pressure remaining constant. If you look at all are trying to connect, you know, entropy with respect to the rest of the, what you call, measurable properties like pressure, temperature, you know, specific volume. So, in the similar fashion, I can get d z is equal to minus s d t plus v d p and from this, I can get that is dou s by dou p when temperature remaining constant is equal to minus dou v by dou t when pressure remaining constant. So, these four are basically the Ma Maxwell relations, right. And this is in the differential form. But I want to write down in Jacobian form what it would be, right? It will be very simple one, right? Okay, and that is basically Jacobian PV is equal to Jacobian TS. You can say with respect to PR or any other thing, right? So, is it true? Right, and this is a very important, you know, expression, these Maxwell relations, because that you can connect the non-measurable properties to the measurable properties. And coming back to that, like this Jacobian form is a very simple and very easy to remember, you know, like, let us consider this one, right. If I consider the first one right here, what I can write down, I can write down T S V S is equal to minus P P V into S V, right. So, is equal to, can I write down this way? That is P V into V S. Can I write down? It is very easy. I am just changing. This negative has, you know, has gone out because I have interchanged these variables here, right. So, therefore, I can write down very easily that is P V, Jacobian P V is equal to Jacobian T S. Yes or no, right. Similarly, I can take another one, let us say this one I am taking now, right. I can write down S T Jacobian P T is equal to minus V P and T P, right. 
similar way i can write down this right uh, this as uh, basically if i write down i can write down vp right equal to pt can i and negative sign has gone right so can i write down this as st i can also write down as ts okay ts here into pt minus is equal to minus pv into pt yes or no so minus minus will cancel it out so i'll get basically ts is equal to pv jacobian so the same thing i'm getting so all these thing you can see all four maxwell relation right all these four maxwell relationship can be converted into one equation in case of jacobian form so that is very easy to remember and handle we'll see so uh, and also you can think of mnemonic diagrams you know which you uh, definitely might have used uh, you know like uh, in your earlier days to remember certain things you know <coughs> like maxwell relation can be easily written in the diagrammatic form like you know i can think of putting this in a anti clockwise if you look at this one here right a g h u this is alphabetical order and these are all what you call potentials right and we know that a is basically function of v and t you can write down here similarly g is a function of t and p this is basically capital p okay pressure and h is a function of entropy and p and u is a function of s and v and of course uh, you know this is a uh, what you call uh, as i told that this potential a this is potential right this is basically thermodynamic potential right a g h s r plus you know in anti clockwise so, no sorry this is in a clockwise place in clockwise direction right because this is the clockwise and it is flanked by the their uh, what you call functions <coughs> or the independent uh, the variables right and um, now i can write down the gibbs equation you know very easily like du i'm taking an example is equal to sin into coefficient into ds and also i have to use sin and coefficient v so if i take that uh, you know uh, this u u if you look at u is basically you know the independent uh, variables s and v so if you look at the sin and the coefficient coefficient for s will be t if it is in this direction you know direction of the arrow then it will be positive sign so this i can say positive sign and and what will be coefficient here for du it will be basically t the coefficient is t similarly and sign for this you know v because it is on the opposite direction of the arrow so therefore the uh, it will be negative sign and coefficient will be p so if you look at this is ds dv and is equal to du so you can write down this basically du is equal to t ds minus p dv this is the gives if you can remember it is fine otherwise also this is the helpful this diagram will be helpful to remember you keeping the sign in in you know in this so similar way i can have you know like uh, from uh, of course once you know this relationship i can very easily find out maxwell relation right dou t by dou v s is equal to minus dou p by dou s uh, v is remaining constant right and we can uh, from this diagram you know we can uh, have a relationship dh is equal to tds plus vdp let me just tell you again how because if you look at h 
H is having two independent uh, variable, one is S and other is P. So, if you look at that uh, for the S, the coefficient will be T, right, and it will be positive. So, therefore, this is positive T. And in this case, for the P, the coefficient is V, it is also positive. So, therefore, it is dH is equal to T dS plus V dP, right. And you can get the Maxwell relation very easily and similar way you can uh, you know have the uh, Gibbs function. And uh, if you look at Gibbs function is basically uh, two independent uh, variable one is P and T. If you look at T the sign will be in this case what it will be it will be you know negative and the coefficient will be S. So, therefore, it is a negative here right. Therefore, it is a negative sign here. And of course, for the P that is the V, it is in the same direction of the arrow. So, therefore, it is positive. In similar way, we can also look at uh, the uh, Helmer's function and that is equal to uh, d A is equal to minus S d T minus P d V and you can get a Maxwell relationship. So, if you look at this is the way how you can remember this Maxwell relationship, so that you can utilize uh, for solving the problems very easily. And we will look at uh, basically thermodynamic uh, relations right and um, of course, uh, for that we need to use some more properties apart from P V T and those are C P C V beta beta you know like it is the coefficient of volume expansion k uh, that is the isothermal uh, compressibility and uh, we know that coefficient of volume expansion is beta is equal to 1 over v into dou v by dou t when pressure remaining constant. So, I can write down that in the Jacobian form that is 1 over v is equal to J Jacobian v p with respect to t p right just to convert that. Uh, you know the partial de derivative into the Jacobian form. In the similar way isothermal compressibility k which is equal to minus 1 over um, v into dou v by dou p when temperature remaining constant and is equal to uh, you know 1 by v into Jacobian v t with respect to p t. So, if you look at sometimes you keep in mind uh, I use this uh, isothermal compressibility sometimes I use k t ok. Uh, you just check I mean k t and k are same right that kind of things you can keep in mind. So, beta by k you can think of uh, you know like you can just divide that equation this if I say this is equation 1 right and equation 2 you can get uh, beta by k is equal to dou b by dou t uh, pressure remaining constant into dou p by dou v t of course, the with a minus sign. And you can apply this cycle relationship you know uh, and you can uh, find it out basically that is uh, is equal to you can simplify this expression right as dou p by dou t into v using the cycle relationship right. And by uh, definition we know C V is equal to dou U by dou T when volume remaining constant and that is equal to D U by D T. And we know that D U is equal to T D S minus P D V right. So, uh, we can use that and when uh, D V is constant that is nothing but your T D S uh, T D S is equal to D U. And I can write down that uh, in place of you know like C V is equal to uh, dou S by dou T when volume con remaining constant is equal to T Jacobian S V with respect to T V right. Because in place of uh, this uh, dou U you can utilize this expression right very easily. In the similar way we can also uh, express in the C p in terms of entropy that is C p is equal to T dou S by dou T uh, when pressure remaining constant and uh, right. So, you can uh, basically can write down C p is a function of S and T 
and similarly cv is a function of what you call s and t so if you look at like uh, you know these are the guidelines i would like to give you how you will you know handle the thermodynamic relations uh, first you express the partial derivative in terms of jacobians right that is a easier way and if thermodynamic potential u h a g appear in the expression replaced by the differential expression you know like for the all gibbs uh, uh, free gibbs uh, sorry gibbs equation we have derived four equations and if s appears in the expression you know you eliminate uh, that by using maxwell relations or cp or cb and uh, final expression should contain only the measurable properties and those are p v t and then beta k cp and cb so these are all measurable properties so therefore you should do that and uh, i'll tell you like you can um, use uh, both jacobian and partial derivative or you can use the partial derivative itself you know like alone and jacobian will be very helpful and it will be very faster also in deriving the expressions so let us look at uh, some uh, kind of you know how we can derive the relationship we will first consider the entropy change which is you know this thing so we have seen that entropy is a function of t and v where uh, tv are the independent variables right and we will use the partial derivative method that is ds is equal to do s by do t when volume remaining constant into dt plus do s by do v temper uh, for constant temperature into dv right and uh, if you look at this is uh, your uh, first term is the m and you can say this is n then you can very easily Uh, find out what it would be right so uh, if you look at the recall this one the cv is basically do s by do t v right uh, into t so therefore i can replace this term you know i can replace this term basically uh, by cv by t right very easily and we need to also look at do s by do v when temperature is remaining constant and from maxwell relation we know do s by do v t is nothing but your do p by do t uh, for constant volume right that we can use here maxwell relations so uh, if we'll do use this one i can get that ds is equal to cv by t into dt plus do p by do t when volume remaining constant into dv right that we can we have already replaced this thing so if you look at all these thing are basically right hand side you know change in uh, right hand side are um, what you call measurable properties right and whereas the entropy change can be expressed in terms of measurable properties like cv pressure temperature volume all those things so then it will be easier and we can write down tds is equal to cv dt plus t beta by k we have already derived this expression right uh, beta by k is nothing but your uh, dp by dt v in the last uh, you know uh, this thing earlier we have done that so therefore this expression is basically now in terms of all measurable properties okay so by the jacobian method we have done the partial derivative means you know without really invoking the jacobian method you can do that but in the partial derivative we will uh, do it just to illustrate that the equation 1 can be written as the jacob ds is equal to jacobian sb with respect to tv into dt plus jacobian st with respect to vt into dv and we uh, you know know this sv and tv basically cv by t that is we already know cv is equal to t and uh, what you call um, jacobian sb with respect to tv so therefore i can write down here very easily cv by t 
And uh, here in this expression, if you look at it is basically uh, what you call ST. We know by the Jacobian that is PV Jacobian is equal to TS, right? By the Jacobian nature from the Maxwell relationship. So, I can do that easily, right? And therefore, that became PV and uh, if you look at, I can write down here, instead of ST, I can write down uh, 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 what you call VP, and then I will take, you know, I can, in place of this, I can write down as basically, um, what you call, minus PV, I can write down minus PV here, and VT is there, if I change it, this become, if I say this is T, and this V, then this become minus and minus, so it will be plus, so that is nothing but your beta by K, right. And uh, then I can get the very easily ds is equal to cv by t into dt plus beta by k dv, right. And we can uh, put that expression, you know, t ds is equal to cv dt plus t beta divided by k into dv. And this is the same expression what we got earlier by the partial derivative methods, right. So, if you look at this is little faster way of doing, you need not to remember which relationship you will be using, you know, which Maxwell relationship you will be using. In this case, when we do by the partial derivative, I will have to, you know, look at it. And also, of course, uh, one can say because the entropy with the volume with temperature, then uh, it has to be converted into pre express in pressure and temperature when volume remaining constant, but you will have to remember. But here it is very easy, simpler way of doing the uh, what you call Jacobian method, because of the fact that the Maxwell relation can only one, not four, in, as in the case of partial derivative. Let us consider the relation uh, form U is equal to T V, right, and um, so I can write down D is equal to dou U by dou T V into D T, and um, plus dou S by dou V when temperature remaining constant into dV. And uh, so that we can also express in terms of Jacobians. And if you look at this thing, uh, we already know from the what you call first uh, Gibbs equation. And this expression is nothing but your what you call dou U by dou T V is T. And whereas a minus p is basically dou s by dou v t, uh, you know that one. So, and uh, of course for this you can uh, find out from this first Gibbs equation you can express in terms of Jacobian that is Jacobian u v is equal to t s v minus p uh, Jacobian v v, and Jacobian v v we know it is zero, right? by the Jacobian uh, rules. So, therefore, the Jacobian U V is nothing but T into Jacobian S V. Similarly, we can uh, write down uh, U with respect to T from this expression that is uh, Jacobian U T is equal to T into Jacobian S T minus P Jacobian V T. And then we can write down basically, uh, you know, equation one as du is equal to, uh, you know, S B and with respect to T V into D T plus in place of uh, what you call uh, D U T by V T, I can write down that from this expression, I can write down basically as um, U T Jacobian V T is equal to T Jacobian S T V T minus P V T Jacobian by T. So, this is cancelled. So, it, you get basically T S uh, Jacobian with respect to Vt minus Pv. So, you can get very easily. 
and this uh, expression is basically uh, you know C V. Uh, this is nothing but your C V. And uh, this uh, we need to uh, look at it and that is nothing but your beta by k, right? And we can use the Maxwell relations here and then get that one. Because Maxwell relation is T s is equal to P v, so therefore we can, uh, you know, replace this term with the Maxwell relationship and then after that connect to the beta by k. So, therefore, we can get d u is equal to c v d t plus t beta by k minus p into d v. So, this is the expression you know uh, change in internal energy in terms of all uh, what you call measurable properties like c v temperature, um, uh, coefficient of volume expansion, isothermal compressibility and pressure right and also the specific volume. So, all these are measurable properties and we can connect uh, you know very easily evaluate the change in internal energy. And for an ideal gas law we know beta is equal to 1 by T and uh, the K that is isothermal compressivity is equal to 1 by P. So, if I put it here you know uh, beta by K become basically uh, P by T instead of this I can write on T. So, this cancel it out and this term basically will be 0 right. If that is 0 then I can get uh, basically d u is equal to C V d T. That means that uh, what you call internal energy for an ideal gas is independent of pressure and volume. It is only dependent on the temperature right. That we have already seen now we have prove that you know by this expression. So, in the similar way we can look at uh, the enthalpy change and we will be following the similar procedures right. And let us consider a relationship in the form the enth uh, enthalpy is a function of T and P right. And we can write down d h is equal to uh, dou h by dou p dou t and uh, for a constant pressure into d t dou h and dou p for constant temperature into d p. And we can write down in the Jacobian forms in the similar manner and d h is equal to t d s plus b d p that we know from the sec, uh, you know expression. And we can write down that uh, you know uh, h p that is Jacobian h p keeping the pressure you know like as a variable is equal to T in Jacobian S p plus uh, V into Jacobian P p and of course, Jacobian P p is 0. So, therefore, you can get this is equal to T into Jacobian S p. And we can also write down similar way like uh, of course, the T as a variable and uh, Jacobian S t is equal to T Jacobian S t plus V. Uh, Jacobian P t and equation 1 you can write down in this, this similar form like uh, and then we can notice that C p is basically uh, T into Jacobian S p uh, with respect to T p. So, therefore, this form I can write down as C p and we can use the what you call uh, Maxwell relationship for right and we know that Maxwell relation T s is equal to P uh, equal to Jacob, Jacobian T s is equal to Jacobian P v and uh, by that we can also find out this beta uh, as is equal to 1 over v v p into T p sorry uh, beta is equal to 1 over v Jacobian v p with respect to T p and which is nothing but uh, in 1 over v into Jacobian S t by uh, with respect to Jacobian T p uh, right. Uh, this we are getting with uh, by using the Maxwell relationship. And substituting uh, these things in the expression we can get d h is equal to C p d t into v minus beta v t into the d p. So, 
uh, that with this, you know, we can get basically the enthalpy change can be expressed in terms of uh, very, what you call all measurable properties, right? And we uh, also look at another, uh, this thing, what we have already discussed, uh, that is joules thomson coefficient, right? Which is a isenthalpic process and uh, which we have seen earlier, you know, like uh, which you use in your what you call air conditioning systems and uh, capillary uh, tubes and then porous plugs kind of things. And we know that if we will apply this fast law of thermodynamics for this control, uh, you know, volume systems, we will find that that enthalpy is remaining constant, right? Uh, and this process is known as isenthalpic process. Right, which, which we have already derived this thing. And if you look at that uh, this, you know, like uh, mu jt, what we derived, that is the joule coefficient, is nothing but dou t by dou p when enthalpy is remaining constant, right? And this region is basically the mu jt when greater than zero, and uh, that is known as reason of cooling because of fact that when P is less than P i, right, all the time it will be because the exit pressure will be lower than the um, inlet pressure, otherwise there won't be any flow, right. So then T e will be less than T i because this will be what you call um, uh, negative in the uh, numerator. So uh, whereas a T e is less than T i will be to make it uh, what you call greater than zero, so that there will be cooling region. And similarly, when mu jt is less than zero, there will be heating region. We have already discussed this thing. Now, what we need to do, this joules thomson coefficient, we need to uh, what you call express in terms of properties, right? Uh, because it is a very important uh, parameter which is used for design of air condition and refrigeration system. So therefore, we need to look at it and um, right, we can express this uh, dou T by dou P uh, when the enthalpy remaining constant in the Jacobian form that is Jacobian T H with respect to P H, right. And I can interchange this one and then get this uh, expression, right. And we know that D H is equal to T D S plus B D P, that we know very well. So I can write down uh, enthalpy, you know, uh, with respect to P in the Jacobian form uh, as shown here, and which is equal to uh, basically T into uh, Jacobian SP. And similarly, we can have uh, Jacobian with respect to temperature, you know, like as a variable. So uh, therefore, we can express this term as basically, uh, you know, um, T into um, Jacobian ST plus V Jacobian PT divided by T Jacobian SP, right. So if you look at the earlier is all measurable property, there, but now we entropy has entered into pictures, which is non-measurable. So we need to, um, you know, eliminate that. So for that, we we'll, we know that thermal uh, expansion coefficient beta which is 1 over V uh, P, uh, 1 over V Jacobian V P uh, with respect to T P. And we know also the C P that is, uh, is equal to T Jacobian S P uh, with respect to T P. So therefore, I can write down C P Jacobian T P is equal to T into Jacobian S P. And with Maxwell relationship, we know that T S is equal to Jacobian T S is equal to Jacobian P V. So uh, therefore, we can utilize this one, right? And uh, so uh, we can write down basically uh, this as uh, the Maxwell relationship is uh, T into in place of S T, you know, I can write down basically V P from the Maxwell relationship, right? By using this Maxwell relationship, I can write down V P here, plus 
V into Jacobian PT divided by TP. So, if you look at this expression becomes you know like like this and then I can look at this V P and T P is nothing but your what you call coefficient of uh, you know thermal expansion coefficient. So, uh, in place of this I can write down as beta V right. And uh, similarly, P T by P T. So therefore, this will be one. I can say V P, and then uh, joule Thomson coefficient will be equal to one over C P. I can take it out. Then it will be beta V T minus specific volume. Right. So it's a, if you look at all our measurable properties, and you can get this. You know very easily. It's not a uh, you know, uh, differential, rather is all our measurable properties, you can find out joule thomson coefficient very easily. We know that beta uh, for an ideal gas 1 over T, so joule thomson coefficient will be equal to 0, right. So, if you look at uh, the, we have seen the phase change processes, you know, from the liquid to the uh, gas and uh, liquid to the its vapor right and also solid to liquid all those things we have seen. Now, um, and we need to uh, express you know H in terms of measurable properties during a phase change right and for that we will have to uh, look at the phases you know how we will express this H in terms of you know uh, measurable properties. For example, heat of vaporization, whenever it is vaporized we need to express in terms of measurable properties. So, let us consider a single component system with two phases liquid and vapor in the state of equilibrium. When it is in state of equilibrium, you know it will be basically in thermodynamic equilibrium, that means mechanical equilibrium, thermal equilibrium, phase change equilibrium, also the chemical equilibrium, you know all those things will be valid. And uh, what we will do, uh, for example, we will take this you know uh, phase diagram, I am taking because solid, vapor and liquid you can describe in a single two dimensional plot P T. So, if I consider this is a point here right and what is that? This F 1 is a state where the properties you know of the liquid and here the properties of the gas right and all will be same like at that point. And similarly, uh, let us say at station 2 like which is another point that also can be same. So, uh, you know like that has to be maintained as a result the change phase change right to have a phase change you know the change in the Gibbs free energy will be equal to 0. So, uh, therefore, we can say phase transition from liquid to the gas right will give the condition that gives uh, function you know like at station 1 for the liquid is equal to gives function for the vapor it is vapor at the station 1. And similar way also we can write down at this uh, you know another point like ok. So, that is G F 2 is equal to G G 2. So, we know that uh, for the liquid phase G F 2 minus G F 1 right is equal to S F D T plus V F D P. So, if you look at there is a some change in the temperature here between these two this is basically D T and if you look at this is nothing but your D P right change in pressure. And uh, if you look at the vapor state right or the gas state right gaseous state that will be G G 2 minus G G 1 is equal to S G D T plus V G D P. Same thing we are writing only the you know uh, we are putting uh, one is the for the vapor and the other is the for the liquid and both the side should be same. So, therefore, if I minus it this equation 1 and 2 you know I will get basically S F D T plus V P D P is equal to minus S G D T plus V G D P 
right? And this, uh, you know, will cancel it out because of this condition, that this condition, you know, and these two conditions. So this will be cancelled out. So if you look at, if I can separate this, uh, you know, dp, uh, uh, all the coefficient for dp in one side and t, dt for the other side, then I can uh, get the dou p by dou t on the saturated condition, because this is a saturated condition, is equal to change in entropy, that is Sg minus Sf is equal, divided by the Vz minus Vf, right, is equal to, uh, you know, like, uh, what to call, that means the slope of this curve, right, this slope, uh, is equal to change in entropy, right, we are uh, with the change in the specific volume. Now, we are in trouble in the sense entropy has come into pictures, right. So, what we need to do, we will have to use, you know, our uh, definition of the entropy. Change in entropy is equal to change in the uh, enthalpy divided by two, T, right, and then I can write down HFG by T. So, if I put this thing here in this expression, I will get dou p by dou t is equal to h f g by t v f g, right. And this equation is basically says you, uh, you know, like the, uh, from the slope, if I know the slope, I can evaluate h f g very easily, right, and uh, provided I know the change in the specific volume, right because I know this pressure and temperature, right, so that I can have conduct experiments and then find out this thing and then we can evaluate HFG. And this equation is known as the Clapeyron equation, right. This equation is known as the Clapeyron equation, which will relate this uh, heat of, you know, vaporization, sublimations and others also, right, into the measurable properties. Right. So, of course, as I told, this is applicable to any change process at a constant temperature and pressure because, you know, it is a once pressure is constant, temperature is constant, you know, that way, see. But uh, for the solid and liquid, you know, or the solid is a vapor, the change in uh, enthalpy or the vapor, heat of vaporization or heat of sublimation, right, will be, uh, always will be positive. So, uh, therefore, what you call uh, that if it is dou p by dou t is positive, right, and um, although we have seen that the change in, uh, you know, enthalpy will be positive, and of course, uh, then this term will be positive only if the delta v will be greater than 0, that is the expansion, right. If solid is converted into liquid, let us say, right, okay, or it is uh, vapor, right. So, what will happen? That will be uh, what you call expansion, but there might be some cases where that will be contraction. For example, like, uh, uh, like your water, bismuth or antimony, you know, like these are uh, what you call uh, contract right, negative. So, therefore, it will be uh, change in the specific volume will be negative when it is solid is converted into liquid, like your ice being floated, you know, like um, ice being floated in water, you know, liquid, which is a liquid. So, hence, during melting of ice, you know, like what he says is a negative. So, therefore, whenever increase in, you know, pressure lowers the melting point of the, uh, what you call this thing. That is the reason why you might have seen that, you know, uh, this ice skaters, right, they press it, so that the, there will be melting out and they can move very freely and that process, you know, the relegation, right, uh, kind of thing, and that is being used for the ice skaters to do that. So, liquid uh, vapor uh, phase transition, if you look at, like we look at solid and liquid, right, we can think of uh, liquid vapor transition. In this case, the, if you look at specific volume 
of the vapor is much larger than the specific volume of the liquid, isn't it? For example, like uh, if you look at liquid and steam, right? If you look at, uh, for example, if you can look at water and steam, like water, uh, you know, steam's uh, specific volume is much higher than the liquid specific volume. So therefore, I can write down the change in uh, volume during this liquid vapor phase transition is equal to the Vg, right? And if I assume that ideal gas, which need not to, but we can assume that Vg is equal to Rt by P. So if I look at, uh, then I can express dou P by dou T is equal to basically in place of, uh, you know, uh, what you call this expression. In the Clapeyron equation, if I put this in place of what you call uh, delta V, that became only Vg, and in place of Vg, I will put Rt by P, then dou P by dou T is nothing but HFG P by Rt square, right. And uh, if I can separate it, this thing, that is, uh, I can write out D ln P divided by dt is equal to HFG RT square, right. So then I can integrate this equation and uh, I will get ln P is equal to HFG by R 1 over T plus constant, right. And then I can uh, get this, I can plot this ln P over 1 over T and then uh, I can get this slope slope is basically this one, right. And if I plot this thing, I can get the slope, I can get the also the intercept and constant. And this expression is basically known as the Clausius and Clapeyron equation, okay. So, uh, if you look at, uh, I mean you can use this thing for uh, basically finding out the various temperatures and if you know the heat of vaporization or the, these things. And it is a very useful expression uh, relating the what you call heat of vaporization with pressure and temperature kind of things. And when you put that thing, I can get an expression like uh, this is ln P2 by P1 is equal to HFG divided by R 1 over T1 minus T2, right. So um, I can take an example just to illustrate how you can uh, do that, use this ex expression for finding out, uh, you know, heat of uh, vaporization and uh, kind of things. So let us say that in order to decrease the time, right, weight placed on the steam exhaust port of a domestic pressure cooker is increased so that it can allow the pressure to build up up to the 225 kilopascal inside the cooker. And we determine the temperature at which the water boils in the cooker and the latent heat of vaporization of water is 2258.02 kilojoule per kg at 100 degree Celsius and pressure of 100 kPa. So we need to calculate this temperature at which the water, uh, you know, boils kind of things. So how to go about it? So if you look at what are the things are given, given is that P1 is given, that is 100 kPa, right? And P2 is also given, 225 kPa. And T1 is given, 273 Kelvin. And HFG is given, 225802 kilojoule per kg. Right. Of course, that is at 100 degree Celsius and pressure of 100 kp. Right. And we'll have to find T2. So what we can do? We can basically uh, apply the Clausius Clapeyron equation. Right. By using
we can get basically ln p2 by p1 is equal to hfg by r 1 over t1 minus 1 over t2. So, if you look at in this expression p2 is given, p1 is given, hfg given and t1 is given, t2 is not given. You just substitute these values, right? You will get very easily that uh, temperature T2 that is 100 is equal to HFG is given as 2258.02. And uh, of course, this is the what you call uh, specific gas constant, this is 8.314 into molecular weight has to be there that is for 18 for water 1 over 373 minus 1 over T2. So, from this you can get T2 is equal to 124.6 degree Celsius. From this you know you can get, but if you look at your uh, steam table right. you will get at 225 kPa, you can get temperature T2 is equal to 124 degrees Celsius, which is very closer to that, right. So, what I am saying by this way, one can know some properties and other properties can be found out very easily. And uh, we can use this Claparin, uh, Clausius Claparin equation and then uh, Claparin equations and for uh, very finding out the properties for during the phase change processes. With this, I will stop over and uh, uh, we have come to the end of this uh, thermodynamic course and uh, I would like to uh, quote from this uh, Osborne Reynolds in November 1883 says, in lecturing on any subject, it seems to be natural course to begin with a clear explanation of the nature, purpose and scope of the subject. But in answer to the question, what is thermodynamics, I feel tempted to reply, it is very difficult subject nearly, if not quite unfit for a lecture. So, with this thought process, I will stop over here. Thank you very much.